Yes, my name is Bench and welcome back to StarMade. We're back with some StarMade logic tutorials. TwitchCon's just been and we've announced some really cool things. Uh, been working really hard to bring that to you. So that's why there hasn't really been many videos out. But you'll recognize this if you saw some of the pictures of the new spawn station that was announced. Uh, this is very similar to the docks that we have on there. So it's using the universal serial dock or the universal standard dock, whatever you want to call it, the type one. And you can see that's defined by the space and arrangement of uh, this uh, hull, as well as the arrangement of the rail blocks below. You can see we've got the faction permission block there, um, which lets anyone be able to dock to this. You can see we've got buttons to be able to go in and out, but we also have a lockout which will prevent anyone from being able to get in as well and that's controlled purely by your faction if your uh, ship or station's faction owned they're the only ones that can own that um, and you'd be able to add other faction permissions to that as well if you'd like but for now we've there's some other really cool features in this as well so we've got another one here they're identical and we can show you here so one of the cool features is the camera you could line it up and you actually have this green light which is currently off if you basically aim at that and you can actually fire your uh, rail docker and it'll line right on up there. Now, the other cool thing that you'll see, and we'll scroll back a little bit so you can see the door there, is that when we fire and you see we dock, the doors open. And that's a really cool feature. So if your doors aren't open, when you get the seal, they automatically open. And the cool thing is when they then unseal again, like, uh, well, it would be good if I jumped in the one which is actually docked, which would be in this one. When they unseal again, all the doors close again. So you can see that. So your, your ship automatically and the opposing universal dock also, their doors close, which is really good. Now, if my doors are open already on one of the sides and I go to dock, it's not going to randomly trigger the door to close they're going to be open and similarly if I am smart enough to remember to close my doors before I undock again like so and we'll fly around and we'll undock you'll see the doors stay shut which is what we want now one of the other cool features we have is the lockout so we'll toggle that on and you see all the lights go red here we can see it doesn't have these white lights on and we'll show you ways that you can reconfigure the external lights and the other lights to better suit whatever you want to indicate but if we try to dock you'll see we attempt to dock and no, nah, we're denied our docking and we're flying off really really crazy with this other ship which is kind of weird but hey with stuff physics and all that do crazy things sometimes so because we doesn't, don't have thrusters on it. So if we dock again, you'll see. We attempt to dock and no, you can't dock. It basically says not happening. So that's a really cool lockout feature. Because it is a public dock, you have the ability to say, actually, no, I don't want anyone docking on this particular dock. I want to lock them out. And the doors don't work as well. And you see there's no faction permission between. Uh, so people can't physically just push the door themselves if uh, if they're not part of a faction anyway. So that's the uh, design for this dock. Let's show you how to make it. So we're in a brand new core here and what we'll do is we'll start off by setting some symmetry planes and this will let us build the actual hull part of our um, universal dock very quickly. So we'll grab ourselves some of the hazard as well as some of the other hulls here just using the standard sort of colors that we used in the uh, preview just earlier. And we'll start off with the front, which is this three by three little grid shape, not grid, um, circle shape. After that, we'll grab our light hull, like so, and just chuck it there. And this is slightly wider. And that's because all our logic is embedded into the front. So it's not somewhere else in your ship. It's right there where the dock is. Um, and that's that shape there. Next, we're going to grab the hazard again. 
and this is the section which actually will house our uh, door itself and on the external of that we place this sort of diagonal pattern now we'll do that a second time and that's what holds in our lights on the exterior and we can also throw in um, the where are we light hole and this goes external as well like so so we're just doing that big ring again and finally we'll cap it off with this little section here which is just the, the same sort of um, pattern that our front hazard stripe section was as well so you can see there's our little depth of our actual uh, dock which it will be so now we'll grab the lights and we'll put all the lights in and that'll be sweet so white and green and red so we'll do the red and green while we have a symmetry plane on and then we can turn them off and we'll do the final amounts so we got red lights on the floor here and here we got green lights in the roof here and here we have white lights on the side here and here and we got a final red light there so it's a layout for it which is good and now we can start laying in things like our rails quickly so rails at the front are easy we just have a basic rail on the right corner pointing in and then we have the rail docker on the other side pointing in as well so now what we can do is we can grab our faction permission block and that is just going to mark out all right that gives permission to use these two blocks and interact with them on the other side we'll put one above where each of our buttons are going to sit and we can even drop our buttons in now like so and we all might as well drop in the activation module which controls our lockout ability so here's the basic layout and what we can do is even grab our camera and put it in on the side and we'll throw the green light on the other side as well there we have it so now we can start laying our circuits out so the first thing we're going to do is put two activation modules down behind our two rails and we're going to connect them to each other and that's so that if any of them detect that we've successfully docked and we're now docked to something it's going to trigger the circuit that we set up in here um, we want it responding either way uh, from either of them in the exact same way so we can just pair them together like so now we're going to be building a lot of our circuits in these corner sections so then this actual circuits can be hidden with pipes or with wedges sorry to hide the pipes and that'll be sweet so it's a nice clean look so first thing first we're going to grab the activation module behind the basic rail and we're going to set up our circuit which prompts us to get disconnected from the uh, docking sequence if we're trying to dock to a place where or if someone's trying to dock to us and we've locked them out so what we'll do is we'll grab a button and we're going to put the button just to the corner here we'll then grab that button and we're going to place that into an AND gate and then that AND gate is going to go into a delay block and then we're going to take that delay block and connect it up to our basic rail here so that is going to say that if we get our uh, attempt to connect coming through so someone tries to dock to the basic rail and we're going to have our activation module here if it's off through the circuit it's going to then say trigger this delay and this delay is going to then trigger them to disconnect we need a slight delay before we trigger the disconnect because otherwise it can get a little bit confused so now what we'll do is we'll take that same activation module here and we're going to throw it into an AND gate and this AND gate eventually with all the circuits hooked up will only light up if we've successfully docked either us docking or someone's docked to us so that's one of the ways that we can control the lights but we'll cover that later on so we'll take that AND gate and create a knot and we can just toggle our activation module so our knot's on then we take that knot and put it into the AND gate that we made earlier there we go now we can also take that knot and we're going to put it into a button on the side here and we're going to take that and put it into a AND gate 
and we'll come back to that in a moment. On the other side, we're going to take the activation module here and put it into an AND gate there, and we'll come back to that as well. Now, at this point, we're starting to set some stuff up just for the different conditions where we want things to change. But what we need is we need to put in our flip-flop, and the flip-flop is what's going to control our door. And we're going to throw a NOT gate as well. So we've got two different types of uh, states that we can be in here. Uh, one where the door is open and one where the door is closed. And again, that gives us some controls that we can use to influence lighting. Now, what we'll do is we'll chuck a button underneath this other button and we can hit that, uh, connect that to the flip-flop. Now, we'll toggle that just so we have the knot gate now active and the flip-flop inactive. Now, we're going to take this activation module and we're just going to place another activation module down in this little corner. And we're doing that because we need to have the uh, ability to connect this up to circuits here. But we can't do it from here, otherwise it's going to cause some messy circuits. <laughs> we don't want that. So now we've got our activation module here and our activation module here. And it's basically a clone of each other, but this is the one that we control with. So we'll toggle that on and off, and you can see they both go on and off. So now what we'll do is, because this is our lockout, it needs to go into a bunch of our AND gates. So it's going to go into our AND gate on this side. It's also going to go into an AND gate above it, which we will connect, connect up now, like so. And we'll take the activation module down on this side, and we're going to connect it into this AND gate here. So now they're all hooked up. We've got our lockout ability connected to all the different AND gates that we need controls for. Now we're going to finish hooking up the stuff going into these AND gates. So you can see we've got this one over here, which is the one we control going into this AND gate here. We're also going to take the knot and go into there as well, because we want this one only to be activated when we're in this state. And on the other side, we've got this activation uh, AND gate, and we're going to take this flip-flop and put it into that as well. And then we can take that AND gate that we just had our flip-flop going into, and we can put that back into the flip-flop. So that when it's on, and when we're not locked out, when this pulse, uh, when this button is triggered, it's going to cause this to change to the state that we currently see it in now. So now we've got all the stuff going into this AND gate. You can see it's the activation module here, the activation module here, and the NOT gate. We can then take that AND gate and go into our button on the top, because we want this to act like a button to open the door the same way we would if we were pushing it any other way. So we can take the button, this button here, and put it into this button here. We can then take that button there and put it into this AND gate above. And you'll remember we connected this activation module up to it as well. And then we take this AND gate and connect it to this button right there. And that's already connected to our flip-flop. So again, having this allows us to be able to toggle that flip-flop. Finally, we're going to take this activation module here. And we're going to also connect it into a NOT gate above. And we can just toggle that like so. So we'll leave our activation module on because we want to be able to say we're not locked out at the moment. And you can see that's pretty much what uh, we have now done. We've finished, so we can actually fill in these extra bits with hull, like so. And you can see that's pretty flush there, nice and clean. All our circuits are in the sides. Still looks a little crazy with circuits everywhere, but we've ran everything. And if we hit F8, you can see it kind of goes around in this sort of semi-circle. So now let's hook up all our lighting. There's a different bunch of different ways that we can do it. The way that we did with the one that we preview is we can grab this AND gate here and connect all our green lights to that. So we've got ones on the external, we've got ones on the internal, like so. And that should be all. Fill in this bit here. And then we grab this current knot gate, which is on, and connect the red lights to it. So those two on the bottom, and then the ones on the exterior. And then for these ones on this side, which lets us know if we're locked out or not, we take the activation module, 
and connect the white lights to that. And then we take the knot that we placed above and we connect that to the red light, which is good. And we can toggle that. You can see all those lights are correct. And we can toggle the other ones and you can see those lights update as well. So now you might be noticing we're missing a key component and that's the door. So we'll type door and we'll grab the glass and we'll grab a plex door and we'll place it down in our hazard spot here. That's wedges, that's not going to help. That side there, that side on top, and there we go, we've got our door. Now we take the knot gate that's directly underneath our activation module and we're holding shift and pushing V, we're now connected to that door. And now our door works the way we want it to. So you can see toggling that opens and closes the door. We can do that from either side. But if we're locked out, you can see the lights change and toggling doesn't do anything. And if we push this button here or any of the activation modules, you'll see that lights up and that lets us know that we've actually triggered someone off. And if we turn it on, ah, because this is still left on. So if we toggle it, you can see it opens. If we toggle it off, it's closed. If it's already open and we toggle it, it stays open. If it's closed and we toggle it off, it stays closed. So we're getting all the functionality we want out of it. You can see externally we have all the red lights and the green lights, and they change if someone's docked. Now sometimes you might say, all right, well, actually I'd like the lights on the outside to actually indicate when it's unlocked or locked. So again, we can take it so that the activation module controls these green lights, like so. And then same deal, we grab the knot that's in the roof and connect it up to these red lights here, like so. And give it a toggle, and there we go. You can see green lights mean that you're able to dock and if we toggle it, red lights mean that it is locked and you can't use it. So pretty cool. And now the final thing that we need to do before we're completely finished is we're just going to go in here and we'll grab ourselves our various hull again, like so. We can open the door, turn on our symmetry planes like we had before, you can see there, and then we're just going to fill in the wedges that we're missing. So we've got a wedge on top, and then we've got our interior wedge, like so. Go along, boom, 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 and there we go. We've got all our wedges in there, and you can change it up if you want different shape, colored wedges, or whatever you want to do, you know. All up to you. But you can see there, that's how it looks, and if we turn the planes off, you can see that's our final dock. All the circuits are now hidden, even on the exterior, and we finished making it. Works fine, we get the same functionality between all of this, and we're complete. Now, you don't need to do this all external. Um, if this is embedded into part of your ship, then obviously you don't need the wedges on the outside, but um, if you are going to extend it out a bit on like a station like we have on our new spawn station, then this is really good because it integrates everything nice and cleanly, all hidden, but you get an enormous amount of functionality given the space that it's in. So that's how you build this Type 1 USD to integrate well with ships, stations, and anyone else using it. Um, until next time, my name is Bench. Thanks for watching.